Hello and welcome. It is the end of the 23rd day of January 2019. My name is Derek Albets, Trades of the Like, within each his own risk and their own reward. And this video is not going to be really about charts. It's the start of All-Star Weekend. One of my favorite weekends of the year. As it starts uh, really Thursday night with the NFL uh, skills competition. I haven't seen any betting odds available for that yet. Then on Friday will be the NHL skills competition. I will be looking for odds on that to bet on. Saturday is the NHL All-Star Game. I've already got one bet in. I'm going to talk about that. Sunday represents the NFL All-Star Game as well as the WWE Royal Rumble. And I have a bet on the Royal Rumble. What is that bet? Well, it's uh, Seth Rollins. Most eliminations in the men's Royal Rumble at 12 to 1 odds. I'm. It's all a work. It's all a setup. I understand that. I think it's set up for for Seth Rollins to be in there early in the Royal Rumble, one of the earlier entrants, and be there very end, and probably even a decent chance of winning it. He's the favorite to win it. They're giving you even odds for him to win. He's also. Uh, favored as one of the main favorites to go the longest amount of duration in time. Yet he's covering a plus 1200 or 12 to 1 price for the most eliminations. I find that very interesting because Braun Strowman is going through injury, so I don't think he's going to go through a whole bunch of uh, big mass eliminations like we have seen in years past with guys like Kane and the likes. So I think it's a very live wager. It's uh, very, obviously very, very small. And that is that for the Royal Rumble. I didn't think I was going to even make any wagers at all. Uh, the first thing I'm thinking about is putting Brock Lesnar in on a parlay with a bunch of ones. He's like minus 300 something to win. I don't see how he even has a chance of losing against Finn Balor on that uh, night. But as far as hockey, let's go over this. The Atlantic Division laying a half a goal, plus 129. Main, basically, win in regulation. Let's take a look at the previous All-Star games under this uh, new format. This is the fourth one. And how it works is each team will have three lines. And they will go uh, three on three. Two forwards and a defenseman. And uh, divisions play each other and the two winners play each other in the finals. There isn't really much for odds. In fact, all I can do is pick on either side or the game to go to overtime. That's all I have found available. But this, to me, is a fantastic price. So let's take a look at the history. Amongst the West, the most previous All-Star game had the Pacific beating the Central 5-2. The game before that, they won 10-3 and 9-6. And I have a huge lean right now towards the Pacific, and I probably might even end up making that wager as well, as Johnny Hockey is the main reason for that one. But I'm playing the Atlantic to beat the Metropolitan. And last year, the Atlantic defeated them 7-4. to year before that, it was the Metro that won 10-6, to and before that, the Atlantic beat the Metro 4-3. to The average scores were 7 to four and two thirds, so there's 11 and two thirds goals total. And in here, 5.2 thirds on each side, so there was 11 and one third. So we're looking at totals that should be looking like around 11. And there is prize payouts for the winner as well. And the final, the final game, the two winners play each other. So this winner plays this winner, and this represents the West, this represents the East. The uh, West defeated. Uh, the East five to two last year, four to three the year before that, and one nothing the year before that. So the West is up three games thus far, and if you notice the average scores, I mean significantly lower. So I'm gonna be very curious to how the totals will work, and uh, I'll go through the numbers when more lines become available to me. Looking at this game or at least the hockey in general as far as the games in itself. Five of the six opening round matches by two and three goals. So we have 5-2, 10-3, 9-6, 10-6, 7-4. So I'm definitely going to be looking to be laying a goal and a half, laying two, laying two and a half, whichever big money or big numbers I can get that, of which 
big money prices. And uh, two of these six games with four goals or more it was a 10-3. And then there was a 10-6 outing as well. So to me, there's no reason to think this is going to be too much better, different with this final game this year where it's going to be lower scoring. And let's look at some players. For the Metropolitan Division, Christian Aho has got 49 goals or 49 games played, 22 goals, 33 assists, and 5, 5, 55 points. A little over a point a game player. Cam Atkinson's a point a game player right now with more goals and assists. Uh, Barzell uh, from New York Islanders, 45 points in 49 games, almost a point a game player. Sidney Crosby having a fantastic season once again, 21 goals, 36 points, or assists, and 57 points. Claude Giroux having a little better than a point a game player, 48 games and 52 points. Reigning uh, MVP, uh, Taylor Hall having a disappointing season in my book, 11 goals, 26 assists, coming off of injury. Both teams have a guy with uh, less games and such. So the average is 18 goals, 30 assists for 49 points. And the reason why that this is uh, 49 and not such is because of the rounding. Both of these are over 18, like 18 point something, 30 point something, like 48.8 or whatever. So it's rounded to about 1.1 uh, points per game for these players on the Metropolitan. The Atlantic Division to me is a much more superior uh, set of forwards. First off, we got Jack Eichel of the Buffalo Sabres, 45 games, 16 goals, 36 assists. I'm, I'm going to assume that his line mate will be David Pasternak. But the best guy in hockey right now is that of uh, Nikita Kucherov, 49 goals, 22 goals, or 49 games, 22 goals, 56 helpers. Wow, it's just magnificent. And 78 points. Austin Matthews is better than his stats would show, but he's still doing much better than a point a game. 20 goals, 22 assists in 34 games. Uh, David Pasternak for the Boston Bruins, 27 goals, 29 assists in uh, 49 games. Steven Stamkos, 26 goals, 31 assists, 57 total points. John Tavares, 48 games, 30 goals, 23 assists, and 53 uh, points. Although not guaranteed, it almost seems as if it's a no-brainer that David Pasternak and Jack Eichel will be on the same line. Simply to put uh, Austin Matthews and John Tavares on the same line, as well putting Kucherov and Stamkos on the same line. Stamkos and Kucherov normally do that. They're both on Tampa and they are on their top line. So that will be a great chemistry that they will have being used to each other and they should be a dynamite group especially if you're looking to play in fantasy hockey they'd be uh, I, I, I gotta presume they could probably get three four goals in this game and John Tavares and Austin Matthews they don't play on the same line too often in Toronto they changed the lines up a little bit tonight. They put Austin Matthews with Mitchell Marner. And Marner should be in this game, but so it is how it is. Tavares and Matthews, they are always on practice together. They play on the power play together. They should have a pretty good, fantastic chemistry for this. So as I see it, I look at the uh, Atlantic Division as a far more superior team. We could just even see it as... This is 1.1 point a game, and this here would be closer to 1.2 points a game. Average player on this side. And the way they got the line set up for both games, either team is plus 129, and a tie is plus 295. I don't like the odds of get this games being tied after three pairs. Or two, two paths, actually. They have play, play 10 minute halves is how they work. I don't like the chances they end up being tied. Maybe 12, 15, 20% tops, tops. So the regulation line doesn't scare, scare me too much. These are very early lines. And I think overall, 
the Atlantic Division should be decent sized favorites. I'm going out on a limb saying over 60% likelihood that they win the game and then very high chance that it is in regulation and very high chance by multiple goals at that as well. And that's why I figure as the lines, there's more lines available, different spots that we're going to see this division noticeably favored over the uh, the the Metropolitan. I took this bet here for the hockey on cloud bet and the the WWE selection on bet online. So that are those are the first two selections of I don't know how much I'm going to be doing over this All-Star weekend. Have yourself a great night. Bye-bye.